Madam Deputy Speaker, Daniel Taggart was murdered by the Parachute Regiment in Ballymurphy in August 1971. These are the words of his daughter, Alice Harper. We identified my daddy by his curly hair. Fourteen times they shot him. The next day they blackened his name and called him a gunman. Two years later, my brother Bernard, with a mental age of nine, was killed by the IRA. We want no amnesty for anyone. Who in this House is going to tell Alice that she is wrong? Today, Madam Deputy Speaker, thankfully, after many years of campaigning, uh, the Bala Murphy family got the truth out there for the world to see. The inquest findings uh, into the people who were killed in Bala Murphy in 1971 uh, were clear. The names and the findings are as, followed, as follows. Father Hugh Mullen, 38, a Catholic priest, entirely innocent. Frank Quinn, 19, a window cleaner, entirely innocent. Joan Connolly, 44, a mother of eight, entirely innocent. Joseph Murray, Joseph Murphy, 48, a rag and bone man, entirely innocent. Noel Phillips, 19, a window cleaner, entirely innocent. Daniel Taggart, 44, father and husband, entirely innocent. John Lafferty, 20, a city worker, entirely innocent. Joseph Carr, 43, a machinist at Shorts, entirely innocent. Edward Doherty, 31, entirely innocent. And John McCare, 49, a joiner, entirely innocent. The families of the Bala Murphy massacre have been absolutely and totally vindicated today. And the truth that some people in this House will not want to accept is this. If those people were entirely innocent, then the soldiers that killed them were guilty. Fifty-seven children lost a parent during the Bala Murphy massacre in August 1971. The family of those innocent victims have marched, have met, have lobbied and fought for decades so the whole world would know what they have always known. Well, you did it, and I, for one, am inspired by your courage and tenacity. Will this Prime Minister now finally apologise for what those British forces did by murdering ten entirely innocent people? Or will he continue to pursue an amnesty for their killers? That's the question. That's the, that's the challenge. And that's a standard that should be met by any country that wants to call itself a democracy. Thanks must also go to Mrs Justice Keegan for her forensic examination of the facts, her finding that there was basic inhumanity in the treatment of the people of West Belfast speaks volumes. That finding was hardly surprising when victims like Mrs Connolly were shot by the British Army and left to die. Inhumane is the right word for it. And to those members of this House and this Government who pursue an amnesty for those who murdered Mrs Connolly and every other victim of our terrible, terrible past, regardless of who the perpetrators were, I challenge you to come with me, meet the Bala Murphy families and tell them to their face that they are not entitled to pursue truth and justice. Six months after Bala Murphy, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Parachute Regiment came to my city of Derry. They murdered 14 innocent civil rights marchers, unarmed as they were. If Bally Mur Bally Murphy had been properly investigated, properly dealt with uh, by the British government, Bloody Sunday would not have happened. Those people wouldn't have died. And the events that came after would never have happened either. This government needs to think again. Go back to Stormont House, agreed by two governments and the majority of the parties in Northern Ireland. As difficult as it is, it is the only way to properly, morally deal 
with the past that we have all had to suffer. I understand the people in this house today have said we need to move on. I understand that. There is nobody more wanting to move on than the victims of our difficult past. But it is well-meaning, but it is absolutely and totally naive. We have tried to move on since 1998 by not dealing with the issues of the past. Where are we today? We're mired in the past. How can people be told by a democratic government that they're not entitled to pursue truth and justice? Does anybody in this House really believe, as the government says, that paramilitaries, the IRA, the UDA, the UVF or the British state will give willingly the truth to the victims as they are entitled to it? Well, if you do, let me tell you about Paul Witters, a 15-year-old boy from my city, shot by a rubber bullet fired by the RUC on the 15th of April 1981. His file was finally released a couple of weeks ago. Half of it has been redacted and withheld until 2059. What could possibly be in that file that people need to be worried about? Forty years ago today, Julie Livingston, 14 years old in Lenadoon in West Belfast, was hit and killed by a plastic bullet fired from a British Army vehicle. The file has been closed until 2064. What's the justification for that? How does anybody think that we're going to get to the truth by asking politely the British state or the IRA to give it to us? Why does Joanne Mather's family have to wait for the IRA to give her uh, the truth? 29 years old, 1981, murdered by the IRA for collecting a census form, leaving behind her baby son. Jean McConville family had to wait decades to find out where the IRA had buried uh, their mother. Why does anybody believe that any of the state or paramilitary actors will give the truth to the victims uh, that they so desperately deserve? I implore you, I understand that we need to move on. We need to move on. But what we are going to do If we don't deal with this properly and morally and decently, we are going to entrap future generations to deal with this, to live with this, to campaign for truth and justice, and it will go on and on and on. The way to make it stop is get at the truth. The only way to get at the truth, as we have learned, is proper judicial investigatory processes. That's the only way we will ever get to the truth. As uncomfortable as all of that is, That is the truth as we have learned it. Thank you.